Jerry paused, looking at the wagons just into town. What the devil are those wagons doing, Frank? Looks to me like they're going to block both ends of Main Street. My God, they are blocking both ends. Frank looked first at one end of the street, then the other. The wagons were not long enough to completely block off the wide streets, even with the teams. But it looked as though they were sure going to cause some major problems for other wagons trying to get past. Frank, they're folding back the canvas on both wagons. Heck, maybe it's some sort of circus come to town or some minstrel show, you reckon? I don't know what's going on, Jerry, but I damn sure intend to find out. I'll take this end. You take the other. Marshal Morgan! What in the world is happening? Those wagons are blocking the street. That can't be allowed. We were just about to straighten out this mess, Jiggs. I swear, Marshal. Some people have no considerations for others, do they? Frank, what is that machinery those guys are uncovering? i never seen no mining equipment look like that. Frank looked and felt cold sweat break out on his face. He blinked, thinking he was surely mistaken. He stared. No doubt about it. His first look was correct. Those are Gatlin guns, Jerry. Gatlin guns? Good God, are you joking? He stared at first one wagon, then another. By the Lord, you're right, Marshal. What are those people going to do? Put on some sort of demonstration? A huge cloud of dust enveloped the road leading out of the main street and up to the mines. The power of the explosion cracked windows and sent some people stumbling off the boardwalk and into the street. <laughs> the road's blocked! The dust cloud flowed over the main part of town, covering everything. The men in the wagons began cranking the Gatlin guns. Lead rained terror up and down Main Street. Several men and women were hit and spun by the gunfire. On his belly on the boardwalk, Frank watched as half a dozen men, all carrying guns and cloth bags, entered the bank. Bank robbery! Frank rolled off the boardwalk and into the street just as the carriage from the Brown Interstate turned onto the main street from a side street. Frank could do nothing except stare in horror as a dozen rounds of lead raked the carriage. Vivian was knocked out of the carriage to lie still and bloody in the dirt. Frank snapped off a lucky shot, hitting the gunner in one of the wagons in the shoulder, knocking him back. In a heartbeat, another man took his place, cranking out lead and death in all directions. Frank tried to get up and make his way back to Vivian, but the intense fire from the Gatlin guns forced him back. He crawled behind a water trough as the bullets howled and whistled all around him. Frank glanced over to where he last saw Jerry. The deputy was all right, taking shelter in a store, returning the gunfire as best he could whenever the hail of bullets ceased for a few seconds. All the stores up and down the street on both sides were missing windows. One of the bank clerks staggered out of the bank, his chest bloody, and fell face down on the boardwalk. A young child, a girl, sat in the dirt beside her fallen mother and cried. Many of the horses tied at hitch rails in front of various stores broke loose and bolted. Others, badly wounded, screamed and thrashed on the ground, unable to get up. While the gunners changed magazines on the Gatlins, Frank dropped one of the outlaws, exiting the bank with a bag full of money. Jerry shot another one, leaving the bank. He fell back against the front of the bank building and lay kicking, jerking, and trying to push words out of his ruined throat, the bag of money beside him forgotten in his horrible agony. <clears throat> Frank rolled away from the trough and under the raised boardwalk, squirming his way a few yards closer to one of the death wagons. He shot the gunner in the head just as another charge of dynamite was lit and tossed. The barber shop exploded in a mass of splintered wood and broken glass. The peppermint-painted barber pole was blown a hundred feet into the air. It came down in the alley behind the barber shop and landed on the slant roof of a privy, crashing through and almost conking a man on the head as he took refuge there. Holy shit! <laughs> Jumped out of the privy and took off, running toward the edge of town. More dust, smoke, and confusion covered Main Street. The Gatlin guns spat misery and destruction again. Frank nailed another outlaw coming out of the bank, his shots turning the robber around and around in a macabre dance on the boardwalk. He dropped his bulging sack just before he slumped to the street and died beside the bag of money that cost him his life. Frank heard a shotgun boom inside the bank. An outlaw smashed through the big front window, 
dead from the shotgun blast before he hit the boardwalk. Frank jumped up and ran closer to one of the wagons. He made it to a dead horse and jerked the 4440 rifle from the saddle boot. Before he went belly down on the ground, he chanced to look toward Vivian. She wasn't moving. Frank felt a terrible rage. He levered around into the chamber of the rifle and sighted in the new gunner cranking the Gatlin gun. Frank shot him in the chest and knocked the man out of the wagon. No new gunner came forward to take his place. The bank robbers were running out of men. Frank ran toward the wagon and jumped in. He swiveled the Gatlin and began cranking, the rounds literally tearing the wagon at the end of the block to splinters, all mixed in with the blood and shattered bone of the two outlaws inside the wagon. The remaining outlaws, not dead, wounded, or being held prisoner by various townspeople, rode hell for leather out of town toward the pass. Graphic Audio. A movie in your mind.